Hello and welcome to this session of Fusion 360 Tips and Tricks. I'm Sashleen Singh, Technical Evangelist at Autodesk, and in this session we're going to learn to build a corkscrew or a wine bottle opener. This is one of the final renderings of the model that we're going to build if you follow these tutorials, but we're also going to build in a bunch of joints and motion links so that the model understands how it is in fact supposed to function so that when you move the arms of the corkscrew, the corkscrew itself moves up and down. So with that, let's get started. In the next five or so minutes, we're going to build the black housing around the corkscrew. The first thing I did is Google the word corkscrew to get some inspiration. And there's obviously a lot of different types of wine bottle openers. And what we're going to build here is a, is a mix of uh, some of the above. Again, this is just my version. You can obviously go ahead and customize your own. So let's start by st starting a sketch on the specific plane. And we're going to go ahead and build the profile of the outer hub, the black part that you saw in the rendering that I showed before. So we're going to build a profile that we're going to revolve to get that basic black central hub uh, off the corkscrew. Again, something to note is the dimensions that I'm entering as we go along. Feel free to pause the video uh, to catch up if you need to. Again, these are something that I've used the caliper to measure on one of the corkscrew corkscrews at home, but I'm sure you can be just a little bit liberal um, and not extremely accurate if you wanted to. One final sketch, fill it there. And then what we're going to do is, um, let's place a couple of fillets here as well. So about 0.1 inches there, and another one about half that size, 0 0.05 inches right there. So we want our edges to be mostly rounded. Now, since this is a closed sketch loop, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the offset command and build a second profile just a little bit inside, so 0 0.05 inches in profile. Now, I'm going to use most of this profile, but I want to trim some of it away. The top part of this hub is pretty solid, so I built a line there that's about 0.5 inches from the top, and I want to get rid of all the offset sketch above that line. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and I'm using the trim command here to take off um, those lines and also some of the offset sketch below that line. And finally close off that offset sketch so that it meets the original one. And there's a uh, there's the close profile that we can now revolve. So let's use the revolve tool and go ahead and revolve exactly that profile about the central axis. Again, you can use the sketch geometry to revolve it about to, to specify the axis. Take a look at what that final preview will look like and go ahead and hit OK. Excellent. The next thing we're going to do is cut away some of this material. In order to do that, we want to identify the sketch plane perpendicular to that plane, or perpendicular to the plane that we drew the original sketch on. So make sure you've selected that plane and this, this one is simple. We're going to go ahead and create two rectangles. Just note where the rectangles, in fact, start. So we're cutting away material accurately. And go ahead and build a rectangle. Now, what I could do is build two rectangles of similar dimensions. But what I'm going to do is demonstrate the mirror command here. So in order to do that, I'm going to project the y-axis from the origin. And I'm going to use that as my mirror line on the sketch. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and build a second rectangle just using the mirror command. So select the geometry you want to mirror, select the mirror line. This would be the projected y-axis, and you get your updated second rectangle in the sketch. Excellent. You can dimension it. I'm going to start with about 0.15 inches and go ahead and stop the sketch and extrude these two profiles so that you're cutting through the part. So we're taking away material. Now these will be extruded symmetrically on both sides and we want them to go all the way through the part and that's a neat preview of what that's going to look like. That looks good to me. Now that we see the part, the 0.15 might be a little bit too small. So let's go back and edit the sketch. The good thing is that it's parametric in a way that, and we built in the, con the mirror constraint so that when we update it to 0.25, you'll see that it automatically updated and the rectangles are equal distance from that y-axis, which works really well. And that looks much, much better. 
The next step is to create a sketch on this top plane and create somewhat of a cylinder that goes through that top part there. So let's draw that cylinder 0.5 inches and extrude it down till the bottom face of that top part. Make sure you select all the three sketch profiles as you're selecting what to extrude. I do want to extrude it in two directions. So let's pick the first direction and ex extrude it to the bottom there. And for the second direction, I just drag the arrow up and say about 0.5 inches again. And I'm happy with what that looks like. So let's go ahead and hit OK. The next thing we're going to do is put a hole through that cylindrical component um, or uh, part that we just built. So I'm going to place that hole right in the center of that cylinder and specify what the diameter is. Again, you can type it in the arrows to pull and push. And I want this hole to in fact be centered so I can pick that reference to make sure that's it, that it is in fact centered. And then I want this hole to go through the entire part, not end somewhere in between. So I can go ahead and pick the through all distance in order to do that. Notice that it actually takes it right to the bottom of the part, which doesn't affect my geometry. I'm actually OK with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. As one final thing on this part, we're going to have to make some cuts for the arms and the little spur gears attached to the arms to be attached to the hub. So those are just simple rectangular cuts. Again, something that we did before, take away material. So I'm going to build a rectangle on the same plane that I built the previous two rectangles uh, to cut away. So this is a new sketch, build a rectangle, and give it a width dimension about 0.15, because I know the spur gear later will be about 0.1. But I want this rectangle to be symmetric again about the y-axis. So again, let's project geometry. I just projected the y-axis. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to locate the y-axis uh, in the window. I just go ahead and locate it in the browser. And then I use the symmetric constraint on the sketch panel to make it symmetric about the y-axis. Let's take away that material. Specify that it is, in fact, a symmetric cut in your extrude command. And it goes through all of the material in your component. And that's pretty much it. That's the first part of the corkscrew we're going to build. Go ahead and watch the next video to see how we're actually going to use the Fusion API to build in a spur gear in that arm or those two arms for the corkscrew. Thanks for watching.